In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the Bitmap Color Mask tool. Now, this is a great tool anytime you're dealing with a bitmap, uh, especially when you have that white box that surrounds your bitmap. So in order to gauge that, here we have a bitmap on our workspace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color my page by double-clicking my rectangle tool, selecting a color, and here we see that famous white bounding box that surrounds a bitmap image. Well, we can eliminate this uh, really, really easily. So I'm in Corel Draw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my bitmap, go to the bitmaps drop-down menu, and select bitmap color mask. Once I select that option, you'll see a docker on the right-hand side of your workspace. I'll go ahead and take the eyedropper tool, or the color selector, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the color I want to eliminate from the bitmap. Now this could be the white bounding box, but this could also be any other color that you want to remove. So I'll go ahead and select the white, and you'll notice how it's now selected here where my mouse is hovering. I'll go ahead and tick the box uh, next to the white, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and adjust this tolerance, maybe start at 15%, click apply, and notice how it's just eliminated that white. So once again, the process is very simple. We're going to sample the color that we want to eliminate. We're going to select that here in the dialog, and then we're going to apply a specific tolerance to it or a percentage, and we're going to go ahead and click apply and watch the, the white eliminate. Now we're going to zoom in here, and you can see that we still have some white left in the file. Now this is when that tolerance uh, comes into play. If I go ahead and ratchet this up to, say, uh, 43, click OK, you'll notice it just reduced more of the white from my file. But, of course, we can ratchet this way up and remove all of the white from the file. Now, the reason why you want to really be careful of your tolerance is if you have a complex design and maybe you have similar shades of color uh, or, or related color, it will also eliminate that from your file as well. So, depending on the file, make sure to start low and kind of make adjustments and you can always dial this in until it's suitable. So you can see here we basically took the interior portion and all the white area of our bitmap and we just reduced that. Uh, so now we literally have a one color, a black uh, bitmap, and now we can make changes accordingly. Now one of the things that you may want to do is trace this. This is a really good procedure before you even trace a bitmap. So I'll go to trace bitmap, we'll go to, uh, we'll treat this as line art, we'll go ahead and reduce the bitmap complexity, and we will go ahead and uh, process this now in uh, CorelDRAW. So I want to show you another important step as well when using this process. So now that we convert that to a, uh, a, a bit, or excuse me, a vector object, go ahead and click OK. And of course, we have our, our vector object on top of our original. And you can see, uh, you know, Corel uh, PowerTrace did a really, really good job on this. But I might go and want to refine some of these objects here, make some changes. But the one thing I want to point out is what if we need to, to say, color this object later? How are we going to do that? The Smart Fill tool is the answer. So notice where my mouse is hovering from the left-hand side. We've talked at length about this feature in some of our other tutorials. I want to cover it now since it kind of relates to this workflow. Go ahead and activate the Smart Fill tool, select a color, and always select No Outline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my object and now click, and you'll notice how it's going to basically create an object where there was no object before. So I can continue to go into different areas here and uh, apply a fill to these different regions, and uh, that will allow me to go back and recolor this design later. Now you have to make certain that you have closed paths. So I'm clicking in this particular area here in the flames, and notice how it's not applying a fill. So uh, it's likely a result of not having a closed path. Now a closed path means that all the objects are connected. And if they're open, then we can't use that particular tool. So in the example, this is definitely a contained object. So I can go ahead and click in that little area and apply a fill to that specific region. So make certain that uh, all of the paths are closed. You may need to go through and do a little node editing to ensure that all of your paths are indeed uh, objects. So I can go ahead and just click into these regions and create colors where there was no color before. And uh, you can see how we can take a, a bitmap and vectorize it and get it uh, to a degree where we can go and recolor it and make it a useful uh, graphic. 